Welcome back to Vitro Life Group Academy Studio here at ASRM in Denver. Um, I've got a lovely panel here um, at the moment on our session about the safety and security of our patients' gametes and embryos. Um, we have Beck Holmes, who is the Senior Vice President of Lab Operations for CCRM, and uh, Dex Vermilia, for, who's the Vice President of Science Advancement for US Fertility. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to uh, kick off the session with a question for both of you. Um, okay. Bex, we'll start with you. Um, so I think we can agree that when we do IVF and through all the whole process, witnessing, whether it's manual or whether it's electronic, is a very important part. Why, do we don't, why, why are we not seeing witnessing happening everywhere the same way in the world? Good question. Um, well, I think both of, the both of us here would um, attest to the fact that we should be all witnessing, at least manually double witnessing um, all the time. And electronic witnessing is going to be the new standard, I believe. Um, but why are we not witnessing? You know, a lot of it is down to staffing. A lot of it is down to um, uneducated um, lab directors, perhaps, that need to be need to tighten up their witnessing protocols. Um, and also guidance. We're not getting a lot of guidance from ASRM or other regulatory bodies saying distinctly what needs to be witnessed and how it needs to be witnessed and how you need to record that mm -hmm. witnessing. Dix, how about you? What's your take on that? Yeah, I think just to add on that as well, you know, as lab directors, you know, we, we kind of feel that maybe e-witnessing can infringe on our um, ability to have to standardize. And that's not necessarily the case, right? Um, you know, we all want to have some autonomy to what we do in the laboratories, and that's perfectly understandable. But I think to have a minimum requirements of standardization, uh, which would obviously lead into e-witnessing steps, um, you know, it's going to be safe for everybody, including the patient, which is, you know, the number one top priority. Oh, yeah. Exactly. So I think with the addition of uh, what I feel is, you know, mandating coming down the pipeline and requiring some sort of additional witnessing other than a uh, individual, um, I think that's knocking at our doors for that to, to, to soon happen. But um, yeah, I think it's clearly very important. Yeah, but I think it's important what you mentioned there, Beck, about the fact that there's not enough guidance. Um, if we look at the mouse embryo assay, for instance, um, you know, it's taken such a long time for some guidance and regulation to come on that. And I think it's kind of bordering on that, where, you know, you need some kind of enforcement to a certain extent. And it shouldn't be like that because people should realize the importance of having witnessing anyway. It should just be standard. Yeah. Yes, it should be standard across all labs and what you have to witness. But yeah, we, if we don't have the guidance, then it's easy to to skip parts that you feel are not as important or you don't have the time for, um, but really standardizing your SOPs for the safety of our patients and for the peace of mind of our embryologists and our lab directors yeah, yeah. and our physicians. <laughs> Absolutely. And so another point I want to touch upon is um, patient awareness. Are patients aware of witnessing what it is, the importance of it, and, and would you think patients would go and look for clinics where they have witnessing? Mm, if you... Yeah, great question. Um, I think patients are very much more educated now than they are um, than they previously were, just in, just in general with the entire IVF process. So, yeah, I believe that there there is a a sense of, of knowledge that there is some sort of witnessing done in the laboratory. I don't know about the complexity. I know that if we do have an e-witnessing system whereby we're able to provide a, a chain of custody report or summary. Um, after the process, I think that can be a, you know, a very comforting tool for the patients to see that indeed um, there were active steps of e-witnessing. So um, to be able to, in, to incorporate that in the overall summary um, of a patient cycle, um, I think would be quite beneficial. But you know, to answer your questions, yes, I think there, there is an awareness uh, to what degree of that awareness or to, to what degree of that witnessing step um, or steps are being done is probably still uh, unknown. Yeah. And I think with, you know, with the news articles that we see every week, unfortunately, of different things happening in our field, I think people's awareness of witnessing is going to be increased. And it's going to be something that they probably will start to look at and use as a comparison between clinics. Yeah, yeah. And we touched upon it briefly, talking specifically now about uh, electronic witnessing. It's yeah. been around for a few years, yep. um, yet it's not a standard. It's not... Um, you know, you would have thought by now that it should be in every laboratory. Again, why? Why do we not have this type of technology in all laboratories? 
Sometimes lab decisions are down to the finance guys. Um, so sometimes it's, it's purely a finance thing. Um, but I think any CEO who's thinking of not having a witnessing system needs to reconsider the implications of that further down the line. The cost that you're, you're paying up front now could save you millions down the line, which I think is, is part of what we need to be um, thinking about when we're implementing a witnessing system, what we, are good, what we are saving ourselves in the long term by having a decent witnessing system that is gonna prevent, hopefully prevent or mitigate as much as possible mm. any errors that are gonna happen in the lab. Yeah. And, and talking about errors, um, I mean, it's, it's big if something goes wrong, if there's the, the wrong gametes or the wrong embryos. So by having this type of electronic witnessing, how much assurance does that give the patients and the clinics, you know, how do you do you feel that you can go through your day not having to worry about something like that, or at what level do you get that reassurance that the witnessing is is making sure we don't have mix-ups? Yeah, I can I can certainly speak to that. Um, you know, I think that additional assurance of of knowing that you went through these witnessing steps. Um, you know, oftentimes it's a very busy day in the laboratory. Uh, we may go home. Um, and <laughs> suddenly realize at the dinner table that, wow, did I witness that I sperm and that egg? Usually, yes, <laughs> and you, you wake up from a, a, from a deep sleep in a bit of a wet panic. Um, <laughs> but to be able to know that, hey, you had that file safe of having that witnessing um, capabilities at the laboratory, and yeah, sure, maybe the first thing in the morning you go in and just double check that indeed you did witness. Um, you know, we're all humans. Um, it's not going to be 100% fail safe, but it will give us that additional um, sense of security as well as just knowing that, you know, that chain of custody had been uh, processed accordingly uh, with a uh, something else than, a, than another human yeah. looking over your shoulders. Yeah, yeah and I think, um, I think we assume that once we've got an electronic witnessing system that we're golden and we're protected from everything, and I, that's not the case. There's still a lot of work that goes into auditing the cycles, making sure the user is using it correctly, and also making sure that our SOPs are reflecting are, are, are capturing every witnessing step that we should be having in there. So it's it's still an ongoing process. Once you have that electronic witnessing system implemented, there's still a process of always double checking that we're using it correctly, are we using it to its maximum capabilities, and you know still working on your SOPs to tighten everything up. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's not sort of like plug and go and then forget about it. Yeah, right. I think it's interesting, Dex, what you mentioned about um, you know also creating a, a better work environment for the embryologists and taking some of that stress away um, so they feel a bit more confidence. Um, on the on the electronic witnessing systems themselves, what would you say are the key benefits for clinics when you install an electronic witnessing system? I really like the workflow that the uh, the, the day table that you get of seeing. Um, they all have different versions of going through the day and making sure all your patients are whatever color they're supposed to be at the end of the day, green for all completed. It's very satisfying to watch at the end of the day, like, okay, my board is all green. I know that we have witnessed everything that we're supposed to have witnessed. Um, I think also the lab tracking, um, that's also very helpful for a witnessing system. Most of them have sort of lab tracking, lot tracking, which is very great. Um, I love a good label. I love I love the fact that you don't have to handwrite on dishes anymore. Amazing, especially if, if you read my handwriting. Um, so it's sort of all the add-ons as well as the physical electronic witnessing. There's a lot of workflow things that you, you benefit from having an electronic witnessing system too. Yeah, and Dex, if I can ask you and follow up on that question, we, you talk about uh, traceability. Yeah. So it's becoming increasingly important to be able to track lots throughout the IVF cycle, which patient has been subjected to which lots of uh, disposables. Um, so making this integration is that, uh, is that a, an easy step? Should it be an easy step to, to not just use witnessing, but use the traceability aspect of it as well? Yeah, absolutely, and it's, it's, it's pretty seamless. Um, we have uh, figured out that you know, it, it can be quite cumbersome to make sure that everything is being tracked, recorded accordingly. Um, but the, even though it may be manually recorded in a notebook of sorts, the ability to go back and when you see that something may be going wrong in the laboratory, to go back and find that notebook, turn to the right page, figure out what number was being used versus having it on a uh, nice, easy to read dashboard has been uh, very, very impressive to use. And I, I'd like to also add that, you know, not only is it 
a witnessing system to be able to make sure that A is going with A and B with B. Um, you know, every time you do a scan, there's a, a timestamp and the ability to go back and really trudge through that data to figure out, um, you know, which embryologist may be taking a little bit longer to do a procedure or uh, was the outcome of this particular uh, low blast utilization rate from this particular patient, was that due to a very long ICSI based on these timestamps? So um, there's a lot more data running on in the background that we're able to, to um, you know, it, figure out is there some additional meaning behind not just making sure that we're doing the correct steps but what's actually going on in the background of the laboratory yeah. and I think it's really important what you mentioned there about in the old days we were writing volumes and volumes of taking parameters and all different kind of things and now we're moving into a digital age um, and it's so much easier to harness the information um, when you do a search and try to find something, like you say, you don't have to scroll through books and d uh, blow the dust off to find things, <laughs> yeah. exactly where it is. So, um, a last question for both of you. Going forward, when we look at an electronic witnessing system, what would you say or do you have any thoughts on improving it even more? What, what can make a system even more user-friendly? More, uh, you know, more, get it to a point where, they, where everybody just thinks, well, I have to have it. I think one thing that the witnessing systems are lacking right now is getting down to the embryo level for biopsy. So many clinics in the US are doing uh, almost 100% biopsy. I think that's a, definitely a pain point that we see um, within our network is going witnessing down to the embryo level for biopsy loading and then embryo loading onto, um, onto our cryo devices. So I think if we can do anything to improve that, I think that would be make our, our lives as lab directors and embryologists a lot easier. I think that's something that I would definitely like to see. Um, what else would you like to see? I think more so um, also compatibility with EMRs oh, and having that, uh, <laughs> that ability to uh, you know, bi-directional mm -hmm. data input. So not only putting in witnessing and, uh, you know, the, the witnessing signatures or the stamps from the e-witnessing system into the EMR as a full record, mm -hmm. uh, but also vice versa, bringing in patient demographics into the e-witnessing system so we're able to, to really work through faster through the workflow process. Yeah. Um, you know, there's some out there that it's, you know, a little bit better than others, but to really have a streamlined, um, you know, parallel uh, data transfer would be yeah. ideal. Reducing your typos, reducing your typos on those labels so you yes. don't have to reprint the whole cycle again yeah. if you've got that bi-directional feed of demographics at least. Right. Yeah, I, I think in summary we can agree um, that we all want witnessing. Uh, we feel electronic witnessing is here to stay. Yeah. It just needs to be implemented. Um, and um, yeah, it's, it's just a reassurance for our patients, reassurance for us working in the clinics, the embryologists, the lab managers. Um, so it's, it's technology working in the right direction. We just need to work on the finer points to fine tune the, the systems. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, I can invite you guys, if you have any more questions about electronic witnessing systems, we also have our uh, e-witness system, which is being launched here at um, ASRM from Vitro Life Group. So if you have more questions on that, um, please speak to uh, one of our colleagues here. Any other questions from the audience about witnessing? Well then, thank you very much for your participation here. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure. It's been great. Thanks.